All right, hi there. This is Mike Holmes at Sinclair Baptist Church out here in Wyoming, and I am the director of the ReachKeep.com uh, ministries that are out of our church here, and I want to spend a little bit of time talking to you today uh, about an important topic that we get a lot of questions on, and that is how we do our membership class here at our church at Sinclair. We are a church plant. We're about 13 years old. I recently just turned the, uh, over the leadership to a new senior pastor and I'm stepped aside and I'm kind of still helping in the background and kind of working on that transition but uh, still have my membership here and spending time on the road uh, teaching a lot of these type of things uh, for folks that are looking to have churches that reach out to new young families really kind of create a lot of, of uh, buzz in the community and bring in young families. And that's what we've done. We're very outreach oriented church over those 13 years. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people saved and and come in. We're a very transient community uh, here in the Wild West uh, refinery town. Uh, just out the window uh, over here is a, a world-class refinery, and it's a big one. We got a lot of energy and, you know, the mining and that type of stuff, and people come and go. It's a very interesting uh, ministry. We really enjoy it. A lot of addiction issues, a lot of incarceration uh, history here. Uh, we are the state penitentiary uh, right in the area here is the state penitentiary. So uh, that's kind of our, our background. Uh, but we do a membership, uh, just like every church uh, probably does, has some type of membership. Uh, actually, I should say not all do, and I, I have found that out. But uh, our membership uh, is unique in, in many ways, and a lot of people ask about it. So I wanted to kind of point out a few things of what it is, what it isn't, and then I want to go through a, uh, what we actually hand out. I'll, I'll show you the actual documents uh, that we hand out to our, our people when they take the class. Uh, it's, it's more of a seminar type format. Uh, and then I will go through uh, the actual order of everything that we do and the way we do it. So some of these things are on the, on the board behind me. So uh, I just want to start out and talk about what the membership 101 is for us, what it is and what it isn't. And I understand not every church will agree with this in, in 100%, but this is just kind of where we have kind of landed on these things. Let me uh, uh, draw your attention up here. Sorry for the terrible glare on the screen. Uh, you must sign up ahead to come to our membership 101 class. And it is a very important thing. We do it about a three, three and a half hour class. Uh, we do it on a Sunday afternoon that rolls into the evening. We've tried it all Sunday afternoon and then try to do an evening thing. It's like, oh, so we just kind of make it a big day and tell people to come. And we have, you know, some of our other people come and help and kind of get things going. But uh, it is a seminar style where they sit at a table. Uh, again, they get a handout with some fill in the blank stuff. Uh, we provide a meal uh, during that time. Uh, but it is uh, right here. It is something you have to sign up for. We only offer it about three to four times a year uh, so you just can't you know walk into the church and and become a member on any given Sunday. Uh, we do not do membership through baptism, and a lot of churches uh, do this. When you're baptized, you automatically become a, a member, and there's a lot of good reasons for that, and we found some reasons that we didn't like about that, and, and there's just some scriptures that we have for that. Um, that's another thing. If you have questions about that, what we believe biblically, you could email me and we can we could talk about that, but that's not really where we're uh, talking about today. So we don't baptize into membership. Uh, you have to be 16 or older to attend the, the, the seminar. Once you, uh, if you're at a younger and your parents join and you're younger, once you become 16, you can take the class, and we encourage our teenagers then to take the class and understand, because we go through a lot of really, really important things we want them to have, but we, you can't just like be an eight-year-old, and then after, you know, 10 years, all of a sudden, you're a member, and have no idea what we believe, uh, and, and so that's why we, we have that, and then the last thing is we encourage uh, it to be taken with the spouse. We've had times when one had to work and one couldn't be there, and that was kind of difficult. We ask them to try to do everything they can to be there together. We've had a couple instances where one took it, 
one time, the other took it another, and we didn't have them actually join until they both had taken it. We just don't want kind of that house divided uh, type of thing. So uh, it, it's more important that they just wait and do it the, 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 right, the right way, the way we feel that we want to do it. So uh, when you come, we have a bunch of tables set up, again, seminar style. I have a large monitor, and I will go through the slides here and uh, let you see uh, what some of the what some of those are, kind of what they, uh, how we, we go through that. I'll, I'll click through those in a few moments. Uh, they get a, uh, just a folder here with some stuff in it, and uh, I'll go through that quickly. I have a business card with uh, uh, pastor information. Uh, we start out, we're going to go to this one first. It's a, a membership pamphlet that we put together. Um, and again, if you're interested in some of these things, you can probably contact me and uh, give you the details. But we actually kind of go through that. I'm getting ahead of myself as far as going through it. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, a folder that has what we would call the Baptist distinctives. And that's why we are a Baptist church, what we believe about that. We have, of course, our doctrine and our bylaws and kind of the, the nitty gritty of all the uh, how the church operates and membership and all those kind of things. But it does include in ours uh, the doctrinal statement, uh, which we go through. And then there's just a couple other things in here. I'm trying not to drop all these. We have... <clears throat> Uh, a big fill in the blank thing here uh, that we do with our core values and I will go through the core values for you and, and tell you what they are and how we teach them and actually click through a few slides and let you see that. We believe that our people need to know our core values more than anything else. Uh, the doctrine obviously is a, is a very important thing but we want them to be on board with what we're doing about our doctrine and our values really are what we're doing about the the doctrine there uh, we also have something else we call the the kid essentials and this is something and our church is very youth oriented we reach a lot of young families and right up front we let them know how the process of how we reach young families and what we're doing to make all that happen uh, those are the kid essentials and i'll flip through those and we also have done complete training on the kid essentials uh, in our Reach Keep Academy or um, you might find some of that on YouTube at our YouTube channel. Uh, we do have what we call a, um, a staff member agreement and this is something that is more for our senior staff members but we go through it uh, with our people and let them know that that when you join up there's some serious uh, a commitment that you're going to make and to read through and to go through all of those things. This is also part of uh, our, our ministry with ReachKeep.com and the Baptist Youth Mission. People that have worked with us, we make them go through and sign off on these things. And we have found that it's just really helpful. It kind of puts a real air of seriousness into it uh, when you're kind of signing off on things. And then last of all, something that we do, a lot of churches don't, but we have an application. You have to fill out an application and get some regular data. Uh, got some, uh, for us, uh, baptism and salvation data, very important, and uh, the permission here to do background checks. And we do background checks on almost every person that becomes a member. I, I'm, I'm not sure if we have any that we've not done. Because we work with children, because of our community, uh, we're going to take that really, really serious and have a, uh, 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 make sure that we're taking uh, the, the, the carefulness uh, side of it and doing the background check. So, uh, and oh, I had someone ask me just the other day, it's like, well, what if they don't pass the background check? And background checks are not pass or fail. The way they do is they come back and they give you a list of things that have happened in a person's life. And we always uh, talk to them ahead of time and say, we're going to do a background check. What should we be looking for? And almost everybody who has some type of a past that uh, was a little rough, they'll say, hey, you know, 15 years ago, I wrote a bad check or I had the, I was incarcerated. I you know, went to jail for this or that. They usually tell you. And then when it comes back through, it's there and you can talk with them. There would be then what we do is, is with all of these, we run all the applications through uh, our executive team, which would be kind of the equivalent of deacons uh, at some of your churches, a leadership team. Um, we have a leadership team that kind of goes through, uh, looks at these things. 
And when we have questions on the background, we then bring them in and talk with them. Some of those would be questions on salvation and their baptism, because uh, we believe in a, a regenerated, baptized membership is what we believe in at our church here. So we want to make sure that, number one, they know the Lord. Number two, that they've made a public statement of that. And so very important uh, very important to go through that. And some of those are, you know, say I was baptized as an infant. I, in fact, I was just talking to a guy just a couple of days ago. He's like, well, hey, I was baptized as an infant. And do I have to do that again? It's like, well, and then we talked about believer's baptism and explained what we believe about that. So um, we go through that. The team also then would look at anything on a background check that is questionable and bring the person in and have conversation with them. And we feel, we don't just say, sorry, you didn't make it. Uh, we, we have conversations on these things. It's a very, very good thing. Let them talk us about what happened. If a person was a registered sex offender, uh, you know, something of that nature, uh, they're not going to be working in our children's ministry. There's no doubt about that. Okay. If a person was involved in embezzling funds, they're not going to be working as, uh, you know, one of our people that counts the offering. So we have kind of made some things, but we have places in our church that anybody can serve and we have food ministries. We have a lot of, uh, you know, busy type ministries where people are cleaning, janitorial, setup, decoration. And yes, you can serve in those areas, even if you have a really, uh, really difficult uh, past. Um, someone has asked always, well, they always get the question too about the, uh, what do you do with registered sex offenders and, you know, people that are at church. We have at our church, we have registered sex offenders attend nearly every single service. It's hard to, I mean, to think about times when, when some of those people wouldn't be here and we keep an eye on them is what we do. They're not allowed in the children's ministry unattended. Uh, some of them have children. So they have to go pick up their children. So, I mean, there's some complications there, uh, but they can't just walk in unattended. So we kind of keep an eye on, on all of that. So that's how that works. We do have some interesting uh, uh, scenarios that come up at our church, and maybe your church has that, maybe it doesn't. But if you're reaching out to new young families, you are going to be reaching out and finding some people uh, that have been through some uh, some bumps in their in their life. So uh, I'm going to reach here and show you the, the slides that we have kind of click through and give you the order. Let me, uh, first of all, I want to show you on the board and it's just off my shoulder here. You can see it and I made it there so you can see the entire order. This is pretty much what we cover and the order we cover it in. There are breaks in the middle there. We have pizza and Coke is what we do. It's just kind of a traditional uh, thing that we eat here for our membership class. And they, when, when the pizza shows up, we order it out. They, they bring it in. Uh, they, we all serve the food, and then they eat, and I talk, okay? Or Pastor Josh, who does the, the other half of the seminar with me, uh, he does the talking as well. So uh, we just kind of go right through the meal. We don't really stop for the meal. Everybody breaks, gets a pizza, and some of that. Also, mixed into this time, we have question and answer times. Uh, at any time, a person can answer uh, or ask a question. So let me show these to you real quickly. This is the content. Uh, we go through the why a member. That was that one brochure I had. We go through our church's history. And we think this is really important to go through your, your local church and what makes you unique in your community. So we go through that. We then transition into Baptist history. And that's a very important thing for us to let people know kind of where we, you know, we're not, we don't necessarily come out of the Protestant Reformation and some of that. We're a little bit different than that. We, we transition right into Baptist distinctives and what is unique about us compared to other types of church. And I'm sure whatever church you're in, uh, you probably have some type of distinctives that you would want to teach so you people understand what you are. That is so important. Uh, then we go into doctrine. This one takes a, a little bit longer, and we just go uh, <clears throat> through this uh, particular thing, take our time uh, going through it. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, then we hit our core values, our four primary core values, and our, our kid essentials. And then we have something called the flow chart, which is kind of how the whole process works here and how you become a member and how we move you into a, a core of committed people. And then we uh, give them the application and we ask them to fill it out just right there. There are some people, 
because they're picking up children or whatever. They kind of we do provide ch child care by the way uh, when we do this. Um, but if they've got to leave right away, they can bring their application uh, back in uh, the next Sunday. Or if they have any questions or reservations, then we talk about that. And we talk about all the, the different things that might have. So let me go through some of the slides and, and let you see uh, a little bit of that. I'm going to try to uh, just kind of click uh, down through here. I think this is going to work. Uh, maybe not. There we go. Uh, all right. Uh, we all often show one of our uh, day camp videos of some of the children's ministry stuff we do at the beginning. Uh, we do that membership path. And again, let me sure, I'll pull all these up here so you can see. I'll try to have them all here. This is kind of the membership path, we call it, and it, it's it's really the why a member. And uh, there's a lot of different things, and we ask them to, we give this to them ahead of time and let them uh, read it as well. Uh, and so that's part of part of what we do. Uh, we go through then, there's a history, and we just put that up, and then I talk about our history. Uh, then we have a slide, and if I played it, that would be the history of some of our church. We put in a kind of a video format. Uh, then we talk about uh, Baptist history. And this is where we kind of go into the heritage that's important to, to us. And we have um, uh, this little question about what is your religious affiliation. And this is kind of an old form. Kind of gets a discussion going, are you Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, none of the above. And uh, the Baptists believe that we're, we're not any of those. Okay, we, don't, we didn't come through the Catholic roots. We didn't come through the Protestant roots. We didn't come through the Jewish roots. We came through uh, when the church was established. Uh, Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We believe that Jesus started the church and there's always been a remnant and not not big. It wasn't always big and, and popular, uh, but there's always been a remnant of independent, not tied to any association, independent, Bible-believing, living for what, what God said in their little community, teaching their children the ways of God. There's always been that remnant out there, and you can read a lot of different books and find out about, uh, you know, kind of where all that happened and how that happened, and uh, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. So we kind of start the discussion uh, from there, uh, teach off of this verse here, Matthew 16, 18. Uh, then we jump into, uh, oh, and I, I forgot, we right there we do our Baptist distinctives, and uh, we have a, a uh, the initials B A P T I S T S Baptists. Um, we we go through all of that, and if you need to hear some of that, you contact me or uh, go to some good old Baptist college, and you'll probably find uh, those things uh, right out there. Uh, the next thing we do is, is uh, we go through then our doctrine. And the, the main part of our doctrine we go through, in fact, what we do is we tell them, see, why don't you take this home and read it? If you got any questions, let us know, okay? Um, and it, we, it mainly has our statement of faith and our, you know, what, what's called covenant statement of faith. And we don't have a, it, it, while well, it says covenant right there, it, we don't have like a covenant on the wall where people have all signed and a charter membership. We just never did that, nor do we do a, uh, a covenant that is kind of a summary of our doctrine. Uh, we do this during the membership class. That is kind of how, how we do it. So we go through the, the basics of it, and we have the, the Holy Scriptures and dispensationalism and you know, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, you know, and some of the real basics, you know, heaven is up and hell is down and, you know, the Trinity, uh, some of that. There are a few places where we stop and kind of park for a little bit uh, just because some of the things are are kind of hot topics and people have questions about them. We do talk about human sexuality and transgender and, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. We do talk about the whole LGBTQ, however many initials you want to add to it. We go through that and what our our position is on that. And, and I'll just give it to you in, in a nutshell, okay? Uh, we believe what the Bible says. We believe homosexuality and those things are an abomination. Uh, and we take a stand on that. We take a stand, but then we lend a hand. And that is kind of our little saying, take a stand and lend a hand. And if you know somebody that is going through that, you know, you can let them know where you, where you stand, but then you serve that person. You love that person. You help that person. 
and I cannot tell you how many people uh, of, of that persuasion of the LGBT thing that have been involved, have been to our church, and some of them don't really like it and stick around, but we have ministered to their children and have been able to train their children in the way they should go. And uh, so we've had a lot of involvement in that ministry, and uh, we have seen some great victories and had some uh, folks get saved uh, and, and converted. It's wonderful, wonderful thing. So uh, we talk about divorce and remarriage. Uh, we talk about abortion, uh, euthanasia. I want to get down to one of the last ones here. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, missions, we talk about that. Lawsuits amongst believers. But the very last one on ours right there uh, is, uh, is giving. And so we talk a little bit about the, what we use for giving. And I know there's a lot of different people that talk about uh, giving or you uh, use different types of uh, giving platforms. Uh, we have used Secure Give for probably 10 years. Uh, we probably have 80 to 90 percent of our money comes in online. Okay, I mean, we have our offerings are very small on Sundays and very big throughout the weeks and on paydays and, and at the end of the month, that type of thing. We are very much a digital church. We've had a kiosk there, and we actually, <coughs> excuse me, go out and teach people how to run the kiosk, uh, or in the case of what we did here, um, and I don't think I have a slide for it, no. Uh, when we did it here is I brought my phone up on the screen and we went right through a donation process and showed them how to do it. We show them how to log in on their phone. We show them how to set up an account. We show them how to do it. And I just actually gave live, you know, some money right there uh, to the church. We show how to designate it for missions or general fund or special projects. We go through that. And that has been very, very helpful for us. And we also let them know that we expect them uh, to be involved in giving. And so we kind of talk through some of that. At this time, we also mentioned to them that they may not be givers. They, they may be struggling with that. And if they do, then they need to sign up for a, another class that we teach uh, besides the 101. And that is kind of our finance 101. Uh, but we use just Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Uh, it's a nine-week class. Uh, we're going to be starting it in January. We do it over a 10-week time because we're taking a break for uh, Valentine's weekend there. Um, but And I get to teach that to every Everybody and we basically require people to take it. Now we can't really twist their arm and make it, but but I mean we've we started promoting it for the January thing probably a month and a half ago. So we will get a lot of people signed up for it. We do it immediately after church on a Sunday morning. People bring a sack lunch. They go to another room, open their sack lunch, and boom, we take off. Uh, same thing, kind of feed. You eat, you know, you can eat, and, and I'll talk, and you eat. <laughs> So uh, we work our way through that. So that is the Financial uh, Peace University. Uh, then we jump into our mission statement. And that is uh, really this, uh, this thing here. Uh, and it's all blank. And I'll click through some of it real fast here for you so you can kind of see. Um, but our mission statement here, our goal is to create flourishing believers. Period. That's what we do. Okay. That is a bottom line for everything. We want to create people that are flourishing. Now you can expand that out and make it fl creating flourishing families, creating flourishing husbands, fl flourishing wives, flourishing teenagers, and flourishing kids. And, and, and we do that flourishing missions program. So, we, but we are here to create flourishing believers. And we believe that there are four core values that help us to do those things. And I will click through it here, but let me just tell you the, the values. The first one is, is what we call, you know, biblical intimacy. In other words, you don't need to have an intimacy with God, okay? From the Bible, you learn about God, and you have this personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not just salvation, but it goes on and on and on, and you grow and all that. That moves you to a second level, which is what we call our second value is active spiritual relations. Active spiritual relations means that I am obligated, okay, to be active with you or whoever. If I offend you, I'm going to take care of it. If you offend me, I'm going to go talk to you because you offended me, and we're going to we're going to work those things out. I'm going to bear your burdens. I'm going to I'm going to you know pray for you. All all of those one and others that are in the Bible are put into that. Those two are kind of tied into what we call 
this idea of spiritual self-responsibility. And it's what we call a mandate. Everybody at our church has to become spiritually self-responsible. Okay, that is where, we, you know, you're going to take care of your intimacy with God. You're going to confess your sins and get your heart right with God. And then you are going to be right with mankind. Okay, so those two things. The next mandate that we have, and it really covers our next two values, is what we call strategic service, that we would serve God with a purpose and in the right way. And we have two values that kind of tie that together. One is this idea of community engagement. And the next one is the idea of, of what we call spiritual deployment, where we are, are you know, engaging our community that is close by. Everything in our little county you know, is our ministry. And then we will go out from there and we will do missions trips and we will t give to missions and we will be involved in, 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 in reaching other people uh, through d different things. And we have a lot of different programs that tie into that spiritual deployment other than just missions, okay, just missions like Faith Promise missions a lot of people have that so that is how our we go through that I will I will click through these like really fast okay let me just fill this all up for you here because and I teach through all this at the same time and let me get the the mandates in and uh, so you can kind of see them all right so this is this is kind of where we're at our our core values vertical relationship horizontal relationship our ministry our missions We've got a bunch of scriptures there teach through all that the, the mandates are spiritual self-responsibility and second of all, strategic service. So all of that is what we do. So I teach through all of that and, and go through and kind of show how it's verified in the Old Testament, New Testament, a lot of different things. Here's just kind of a simple thing of it. And then we run into what we call the kid essentials. And now this is really unusual for a ministry uh, or a, a membership class to be teaching how your children's ministry essentials work. But because we are so committed to reaching the young moms and dads of our community, and that is our programmatic focus, our church is here to reach out to the young moms and dads of our community. We want to tell people how it happens. And so there are these four things that it takes to raise kids. And I go through and I teach through these. And, and there's much longer, we do a whole whole lengthy webinars on, on some of this if you'd like to know more about it. But the kid essentials, I'll go through them first real quick. Effective instruction. Okay, I got a few pictures. We show some of that. Second one is involved parents. In other words, you got kids have to have good instruction. They got to have involved parents. So it's got some pictures there. Quality friendship is what really helps kids grow the right direction. And we all know this by the opposite. If they have unquality friendship, they go downhill fast. And then the last one is what we call reinforcing voices. It is the outside voice, the mentorship, and the, the godly examples, and all of that uh, that is put there. So uh, we teach through uh, some of those things. So those are the kid essentials. Now that is more or less where our membership uh, thing ends, and I think uh, we have this little flow chart, I call it, chart of flow, and it's really just some concentric circles of, that I talk about how, you know, you came out of the community, and you worked your way into our church, and then from your church, now you're looking to be more committed into our church. And from there, we have a core leadership that teaches. And so I kind of teach how, how that works. And we move, we're constantly moving people toward the center. You can't be stagnant uh, at, at our church. So uh, that's the chart of the flow, and that's the end. Now, that's the end of the slideshows. Uh, the one thing we do, though, at that part, after the flow chart, is we give them an application and we tell them how to fill it out. We explain the background check process and what we're looking for here and then what they need to do. And then our membership class is basically over. That's about a three hour class, three hours and 15 minutes, kind of depends. And again, we have a child care uh, thing set up for it. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I hope that you can take some little tidbits of this and use it. Uh, we highly recommend uh, the, the, the teaching of the core values. That is the greatest thing that you can, uh, that's the most single important thing that we do. We would much rather have a small membership that is really committed and knows our values than a larger membership that is not committed. Uh, our particular little town is down of about 10,000, 8,000, 9,000, something like that. We have 
a church in town. Someone told me about it. They have, I'm sure they had less than 20 people on Sunday. Okay. It's a kind of a more of a mainline denomination church. But someone told me who's kind of on the insider there that they have 300 people on their rolls and 300 members of that church, but only 20 of them come to church. Now we're just the opposite. We do not want to have a large membership. We want a small membership that is tight and focused and knows what's going on and is with us. We have tremendous unity in our church going this way. We just went through a transition and voted in a new pastor, unanimous decision, good discussion, good talk, and all that. All our Bible studies are good. We have great harmony and unity because we keep everybody on the same page and because we require some of those things, active spiritual relations, and you're going to work with kids, you're going to be involved, and we're going to put you through a financial class and help you to grow and, and be a better a better steward of what God has given you. So anyway, uh, that, this is Mike here at reachkeep.com. You can always go to reachkeep.com and find some of our resources. We will put this on the YouTube channel, which is reachkeep on YouTube. Uh, we'll probably put some of this recording on our, our podcast. We have a great podcast. It's really growing right now called The Better Sunday Podcast. And uh, really excited about how all that is going too. So uh, I want to say a great big thanks uh, to all the people that make this happen. I couldn't do this. Uh, all of this stuff without just great admin people uh, that helped me do it. But this didn't happen the first day either. Our first membership class wasn't quite as detailed as, as some of this. Um, but we did start out, like say, with those core values. That was right off the bat because that's what we wanted to do. We want a serving church that loves one another. And uh, so that's what we're doing. So anyway, God bless you. Make sure you glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do. And we will see you uh, next time or on one the podcast. God bless. Bye.